So the tents are all dry. The sun is coming out. We are in Buffalo, New York at a national site we've never visited before. Today we want to welcome you to Teddy Roosevelt inaugural site. That was good. It's six o'clock in the morning and we need to get over to Teddy Roosevelt inaugural site. There's not much worse than when you have to get up early. It's still dark outside. It's been raining morning long and all your equipment is wet. What's the matter, buddy? You got those exact <laughs> pillows still in your hand. So we're gonna pack up some wet equipment. But it could be worse, it could still be pouring rain right now. We pack up wet bodies as well. So thankfully, the rain is sort of let off. Time to wake up the girls, pack up the car, and head into New York. Girls, you guys awake? Let's try that again. Hey girls, you up yet? All right, here we go. Good job, guys. I'd like to welcome you to the Theodore Roosevelt inaugural National Historic Site. We are here in Buffalo and this room is here to represent the Pan American Exposition, which was a World's Fair in 1901. President William McKinley is here and he is greeting citizens in the Temple of Music. a terrible tragedy struck this country. Our beloved President William McKinley was shot twice by an unemployed factory worker from Ohio. The man's name is Leon Shalgoss and it's believed he's associated with the anarchist movement going on throughout the country. We were tipped off to the actual site where McKinley was shot at the Pan American Exposition. That's the actual spot where McKinley was fatally shot September 6th, 1901. A little tiny makeshift memorial right in the middle of a median in a residential neighborhood. September 14th, 1901. President William McKinley died from his injuries. Theodore Roosevelt's nervous. He's sipping his coffee, rustling through the newspaper, facing the room. He knows he's going to have to take the oath of office to become the next president of the United States. He has a lot on his mind. There are many issues that he's going to have to deal with once he becomes president. Now, Theodore Roosevelt's mostly alone in this house. Senator Hanna, excuse me, but I need a few moments by myself. It is a dreadful thing to come into the presidency this way. But it would be a far worse thing to be morbid about it. Here is the task, and I've got to do it to the best of my ability. But Theodore Roosevelt does not think it is appropriate for him to take the oath of office where President McKinley's body is lying, along with the grieving First Lady. So he's decided to return to the house of Ansley Wilcox, where he's been staying, in order to take the oath. And right now he's in the library preparing to take the oath of office to become our next president. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Theodore Roosevelt. I, Theodore Roosevelt. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of the President of the United States. President Roosevelt sits at, his, at the desk writing a proclamation to the nation. He wants his statement to the nation to be a way to ease their fears, to assure them that the country is still in good hands. 
So his time here in Buffalo is very short-lived, but nonetheless, an important moment in American history. So here's a recreation of Teddy Roosevelt's office in the White House. Let's go check out Shane behind the desk in the Oval Office. After McKinley died, Theodore Roosevelt was given an incredible opportunity to change the nation and he didn't take that lightly, which I really appreciate because he worked hard to make not only the nation a better place but the whole, bring peace to the whole world. So it's amazing that they had the Pan American Exposition, which is like the World Fair here in Buffalo, and during such a festive time McKinley was shot point blank by a guy that came to shake his hand with a handkerchief over his gun. Seeing these places in real life, it makes history that much more real and it makes you respect the people involved in history that much more. Um, and this event specifically, with it being such a big part of our nation's history, it makes you appreciate what America is and what we stand for. I like coming to these places because you have a lot more appreciation for who the president was and what they accomplished. Stepping into office, he had to deal with things like big business and environmental things and um, foreign affairs, so he really accomplished a lot as president and um, just set up a great nation for us. To the best of my memory, we have now done Teddy Roosevelt's birthplace in New York City. We've done Teddy Roosevelt National Park in North Dakota. We've done Teddy Roosevelt Island in Washington, D.C. And today we just finished up with Teddy Roosevelt National Inauguration Site. What a nice day we had today. There's the building behind us right there. Uh, much more than I expected. Really didn't know what we were getting into, but it was very fascinating. We had a great tour guide. Um, the overall display was laid out very nicely. Uh, interesting and educational at the same time. So we're moving on. We're gonna head over to nearby Niagara Falls right now. That's the plan. I wanna thank you for traveling with us. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed this little history lesson of our great nation. And remember, there's always room for you on every one of our national park adventures. It is in the gift shop. You forgot it in the gift shop. By the lollipops. Okay, you're a close to me. Shane, Shane, look at me. When it comes to your passport book, you got one shot with that, all right? You can't go back and redo all your stamps. You lose that thing, it's all gone for good, all right? You better track of it. Thanks for helping them out, girls. Of course. I'm glad he remembered it now before we got home. That'd be bad.